in the previous lecture we have discussed about uh, various transducers or sensors that are used for uh, measuring the vibration in this lecture we are going to discuss about the vibration exciters so first of all what is in by a vibration exciter so a exciter is a machine which produces mechanical vibration so a sensor will measure the vibration and the exciter will produce the vibration so the sensor will convert the mechanical input into an electric pulse in case of a exciter it will produce a mechanical vibratory motion okay what is the purpose of using exciter means so the exciter are used uh, to identify the dynamic characteristics of machines structures or for any testing purposes for example if i am producing a new material and i want to test uh, the dynamic behavior of the material so i have to excite the system that is i have to vibrate the system externally so in that case your vibration exciter is used to produce artificial vibration okay so the vibration exciters are mostly used for testing purposes so there are two types of vibration exciters are there one is mechanical exciter and the another one is electronic exciter so first one mechanical exciter so the basic mechanical exciter is based on scotchyoke mechanism so we know that what is scotchyoke mechanism so the disc will rotate it has a pin and when the disc rotates the rod will reciprocate okay so this disc will be connected with the motor and when the motor rotates then this rod will produce some vibration so this is all about uh, using scotchyoke mechanism as a mechanical exciter okay so this scotchyoke mechanism is used in uh, the excitation for uh, car dynamic uh, analysis that is uh, dynamic analysis signal producing for cars okay so before uh, manufacture before uh, sending the automobiles to the market uh, generally what they will do is they will uh, excite the vehicle and they will measure the vibration levels and they will check whether the measured levels are within the safe limit or not so in that case they have to uh, provide external vibration to the automobile so for uh, vibrating the cars and uh, aeroplane wings so this scotchyoke -like mechanism is used earlier then the next one is unbalance so it's very easy we know that the unbalance will uh, produce some vibration and uh, if you create unbalance artificially then it will automatically create the vibration you can see the image so here an unbalanced mass m is placed with an eccentricity of r <coughs> and uh, the system rotates with an angular velocity of omega so when it rotates we know that it will produce some unbalance so the magnitude of the unbalanced mass will be m not e omega square okay so here the unbalance is used to produce the vibration so this is uh, another type of mechanical exciter so you can see the image so the motor is connected with the unbalanced disc so in this disc so we have a mass on one part of the disc alone so for the remaining 180 degree we don't have any mass so it creates unbalance and when the motor rotates automatically the system will vibrate so if you fix this motor on a machine then uh, the generated vibration of this motor will also be transmitted to the machine and the machine will get vibrator okay so this concept is used in uh, the mobile phone vibrators so it's so small vibro motor is used with some unbalance the next one is electrodynamic shaker so this shaker is uh, used in all applications nowadays okay so it has a coil and uh, a magnet so the principle of electrodynamic shaker is when current passes through a coil placed in a magnetic field a force f proportional to the current and the magnetic flux intensity is produced which accelerates the component to be placed on the shaker table so when the current is passed through the coil that is placed in a magnetic field then the vibration is produced on the movement moving element that is owned by the coil okay, so this uh, coil i mean element will be fixed with the exciter table and the exciter table will vibrate okay so this is uh, the concept of electrodynamic shaker so here the electrodynamic shaker converts 
uh, the electrical input into a mechanical output. So in case of uh, a mechanical vibrator, the motor generates the vibration. So there also the electrical input is given to the motor and the motor converts the electrical input into a mechanical vibration. So here uh, the flexible, I mean electrodynamic shaker is converting the electrical signal into a mechanical output. So it is inverse to the sensors. So these are all uh, the electrodynamic shakers. So we have electrodynamic shakers uh, on a plenty of variety. So based on uh, the recruitment we can select the electrodynamic shakers. So the purpose of uh, shakers is clearly explained uh, here. So that is experimental modal analysis. So what is meant by experimental modal analysis is as I discussed earlier before uh, delivering the new newly produced automobile into market so actually we have to measure the vibration signals the vibration response of uh, the vehicle and we have to check whether the vibration generated is within the safe limit or not so that is the first point and second point we have to check the resonance so that is the vehicle uh, induced vibration should not match the natural frequency of the component that is fixed in your vehicle so it should not match uh, with any of the component so that is the purpose of doing experimental model analysis so experimental model analysis means experimentally we are going to identify the natural frequency so in uh, ANSYS uh, you may have uh, done the model analysis that is calculation of natural frequency at different modes so in case of experimental we are going to calculate the natural frequency in a experimental manner so first of all I will explain the construction then we will move into the working principle. So here we have uh, an automobile that is supported in a elastic card. So it is not fixed in the foundation. So the purpose of uh, providing elastic cards or springs is to provide a free uh, movement to the structure. So because if uh, the car is placed on uh, the floor then the floor will absorb some amount of vibration. So that is why it is in a placed in a floating manner. Then a vibration transducer or accelerometer is uh, uh, placed here and uh, the output of uh, the accelerometer is given to a spectrum analyzer. So it's a FFT analyzer or maybe we can use any kind of uh, controller. Then the output of uh, the controller is given to the computer so where we can uh, watch the response and uh, another output of uh, the spectrum analyzer is given to and power amplifier so the ampli purpose of using amplifier is to amplify the input signal and the output from the power amplifier is given to the exciter so then the exciter table is fixed to the structure so the exciter will vibrate the system the accelerometer will measure the vibration levels of the system okay so fine so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to provide uh, some uh, amplitude to the exciter so slowly i am going to increase the frequency and amplitude of vibration so first consider the frequency so i am going to increase from 0 hertz to 100 hertz okay so i am increasing slowly i am increasing 0 then uh, i am watching the frequency spectrum okay so frequency spectrum means you will have a graph like this so in the x axis you will have frequency and in the y axis you will have amplitude so maybe in terms of uh, uh, displacement or maybe in terms of acceleration okay fine so you will get uh, small peaks like this okay fine so when it reaches the natural frequency for example consider that the first natural frequency is at uh, 25 hertz so slowly I am increasing from 0 5 10 20 and 25 so when it reaches 25 then if you watch the frequency spectrum clearly you will have a peak like this and if you refer the hertz value then it will be exactly at 25 hertz. So whenever if you see a peak value at uh, your frequency domain then that is the natural frequency because we know that at natural frequency the system will vibrate with high amplitude. Okay, So here the amplitude will be high. So this is the first natural frequency of the system. So further what I am going to do is I am going to increase the uh, amplitude so after 25 hertz then the response will be normal 
and slowly I am increasing from 25, 30, 35. For example, consider the second natural frequency is at 50 Hz. So, once it reaches the 50 Hz, then I will get another peak value exactly at the 50 Hz. So, that is the second natural frequency. Okay, so like this, you can check uh, uh, n number of natural frequencies. Okay. So that is the objective of uh, experimental model analysis and you can see this frequency plot in the FFT analyzer. So the FFT purpose of FFT analyzer is to convert the accurate data signal into frequency domain signal. So that is uh, the purpose of using FFT analyzer. Okay. So this is how we can identify the various natural frequencies of any system using experimental model analysis.